Oh, we're playing with some redstone. It's gonna be a good time playing with some redstone and making some stuff. Playing with some redstone. It's gonna be a good time playing with some redstone. I just can't get enough. Hey! Hello, everybody. This is Terrence Flip Flop McGee here, and we're gonna be doing a little let's play of Minecraft. This is kind of a weird seed to spawn in, but. Uh, you know what, I don't really feel like playing in this world, so what we're going to be doing instead is talking about redstone mechanisms. Yes, that is right, this is doing it redstone with Davex, and we're going to be talking about, like I said, redstone mechanisms, which are, in my mind, a little bit different from, uh, you know, redstone machines or circuits. Some people call these circuits, but... I, I just say it's a mechanism because in my mind mechanisms you know are part of a machine but to start off I'm gonna start off with some basics this is a little example of ticks redstone ticks which are different from game ticks a redstone tick is once in uh, one tenth of a second okay sorry a game tick is one t one twentieth of a second yes yes that's what it is but yeah as you can see this is called an oscilloscope it's a whole bunch of repeaters lined up and pretty much to use it you just take it fly up and then take a screen capture count how many ticks there are if you don't know how to take a screen capture I believe it's F1 yes let me see no F2 yeah that's what it is press F2 look at the screen capture and then you'll uh, uh, be able to count out how many ticks your pulse is putting out. So next up we're going to be talking about this. It's a T flip-flop which stands for toggle flip-flop and what this does is it takes an input and turns it into basically a switch so I can take this button and it becomes a switch. So when I press that button that block gets shifted over over a redstone torch which will power the block powering whatever you have going out so yeah it just turns it into a nice little switch for you and this is what's called a falling edge uh, T flip flop because it changes the position after the pulse is done so once the button uh, comes back out becomes depressed it switches over and what's nifty with this design, uh, with some other T flip flops as well, is that you can have two different outputs for the one input. So when I press the button, it flips over, turns this on, and then I press it again, it flips back over, turns that on. Pretty, ain't it? The way you make these is really, really simple. It's just two pistons, uh, two blocks apart, facing each other, with this little. Uh, upside down L shape of opaque blocks and you have some redstone over the top and two torches output obviously goes on the bottom here and you could have uh, four different outputs but they kinda just equate to two uh, but you can have uh, the button doing four different if not similar things at the same time and over here this is what is called a rising edge flip-flop and that's because it switches over right at the beginning of the button press it's much much faster and that's a beautiful thing all you do is just throw a little torch on over here and that's what causes it to be rising edge over here is another example of a little miniature T flip flop it's nice and compact very pretty thing and as you can see it works pretty well uh, to make this you need some droppers a button comparator and then anything of uh, any block or item of your choosing and you take this put one up put one facing the side whoops darn up and then down and then just shove a little hopper in there and that's pretty much it except you need to throw in a nice little block nice and pretty and a comparator and comparators are able to take output from a 
uh, storage device like these. You can have it in pretty much any of these and you could have the uh, comparator here or up here so now we have dual outputs for the one uh, one button if that makes any sense. Now on to this little mechanism here it's called the pulse limiter and as you could probably guess from the name it limits the pulse of a uh, input so this is one of the most simple ones and it's just you know block torch redstone going up to this torch with a repeater minimum delay is three ticks you could set it to four for a little bit of a longer delay or add more repeaters but it won't work on one or two ticks it must be three ticks or more and then over here we have another one this is a monostable circuit which I guess this can also be considered a monostable circuit. A monostable circuit is pretty much just a circuit that allows... Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Right now it is in its stable state, and as soon as you put an input, then it becomes unstable and reverts almost immediately back to its original state. And that's why it works so well as a pulse limiter. Up here, as you can see, this is a sticky piston. And this is letting out a one tick pulse. Uh, so what that does with the sticky piston is it actually just pushes the block out and then it leaves it there, which can be pretty handy for making a few different things. You can make like a T flip flop out of it or some other interesting uh, mechanisms. Ugh. But yeah, that that's one of the main uses for it. I really like it. Over here we have a pulse extender, which as you could probably guess is the opposite of the pulse limiter. It takes the input and extends the pulse. So when I press this button, see it's off, but that was still going. And the way this works is once you put a pulse in, it will power this redstone, puts it into a nice little loop here, uh, which you usually want to avoid, but since I have this going on, uh, this will extend the pulse so pretty much the pulse will go through these repeaters into this piston pushing out this block uh, this is a sticky piston by the way and then it cuts off the circuit here which will then turn this off because it eliminates the loop and there, there are multiple different uh, you know variations of these I'm just showing you a few of the more common ones now we're on to a clock, and if you don't know what a clock is, you must be living under a rock or something. Basically, what this does is it takes a redstone signal, and it turns it on and off at a set interval. So this one is a really nice, simple, compact clock, uh, very fast pulsing, and to turn it on, you just do that. That's it. See how fast it's pulsing? Beautiful. And pretty much why this turns it on and off is because this torch powers this redstone which will power this but as soon as you place this uh, it will be on for a split second so once you get this going you can actually just destroy this and take it apart and this will keep on going on to this one now this is another rapid pulser uh, pretty much just put that there. This is what's called a burnout clock because if a torch gets too many pulses it will eventually burn out quickly and the reason this works is because since we have four torches every time one burns out another one starts going. Uh, to turn it off just take off that redstone there. Over here we have just a extended version of that clock there uh, and since it's so long I could just put a button there and this just sends a nice little uh, pulse around and around and around and as you can see this will just keep on flashing on and off same thing over here so you could have a few different outputs for it and it's pretty useful I, I like this clock it's used a lot it's one of the most basic and common that you'll find out there and yeah for this one this is a minecart clock, so pretty much to get this guy started, you just push the minecart, and he goes around in a circle, 
and as you can see we've got little uh, detector rails here so every time it passes over it whoa it'll give a little redstone output so you can have as many of these as you want lined up and yeah it'll be fairly constant but if anything gets in the way of the cart or you know gets in the cart it can really screw it up so I wouldn't really rely on this too much unless you know for a fact that it's nice and concealed now things are going to start getting a little bit more complicated. This is an RS Norlatch, which stands for Reset Set, not Redstone. And pretty much what this is, is a little memory circuit. So when I press this button, it'll switch this over to this side, and it'll remember that. So no matter how many times I press this button, it'll stay over there. Over here is the reset for it, and it'll switch it back over to this, or if you want that you know just to be off then you can keep it off and it'll stay like that again until I press this button over here is what we call an RS Norlatch array so it's a whole bunch of them lined up and you can actually pretty much count with this it's pretty useful I, I like this machine a lot all you do press the button uh, by the way this is just a little pulse limiter uh, for it it kind of needs it for the way I've got it set up. Again, there are more than one way to set these babies up, but this is the one I like. It's pretty simple. Uh, you just need this extra pulse limiter for it. Uh, but press a button, and as you can see, it counts up. And then when I get to that last one, it'll reset all of them. Just because I have this little doohickey feeding back around from that output back into this, which will turn them all off. And I'll show you how to make this, too. Uh, what else do I need? I believe that's all I need. So to get this guy set up, you put one, two, three, four, five, six, and you can keep on going for almost as long as you want. And just put some redstone on top, put some comparators, or yeah, not comparators, repeaters. Then throw torches some nice pretty old torches here then throw a block up and more torches and to get the array because right now these are used just a nice little RS nor latch uh, just throw in some repeaters down here and I think you also need this I'm not sure uh, but you can have an output from the back or from the top up here and just throw in a little uh, pulse limiter and you'll be golden. One thing to note about this is that for this to work, this pulse limiter, the repeater needs to be set to 4 ticks. It will not work for 3 ticks. Uh, the pulse is just a little bit too fast for it. So 4 ticks it is. This final little doohickey over here is what we call a bud switch or just bud or whatever you want to call it and that stands for block update detection. This is the closest thing to magic that you will get in redstoning. So basically the way this works is that with a piston being powered at a tangent as you can see that's on but this piston is not on uh, if that makes sense. But if I put a block there it'll push out and I can take that away and do that and it'll stay like that until I turn this off and then update it again and that's the most basic rule of these little doohickeys this one over here this is the bud or the this is the piston being budded and pretty much this sends a nice little pulse the output is down here and oh crap uh, that's not what I wanted let me grab this real quick put that there and this will keep on pulsing back and forth like that and the reason for that is because this is powering that which is powering this block turning off this torch but this torch had been on before pushing it back out and not letting this piston extend so that's why this is butted and whenever I do this pretty much it uh, will send a little pulse going back and forth and 
it's really nice really useful I like it uh, this one over here this can be hidden in a wall um, like one sec pretty much like that and if I grab some redstone uh, buds work from two blocks away so one two and with this even though I put that down as you can see it didn't react but now it did it works with taking off redstone and I think torches as well I'm, I'm not so sure about torches let me test that yeah but that goes back and forth uh, if you want it to work as a T flip flop gotta use redstone but yeah th this one's also pretty simple this is being butted by this block up here which is being powered by this torch which this is off and because of this Let, let's work from this way now so this torch is powering this block powering this redstone which is powering this torch torch turning it off which means it allows this to stay on so when that's on this is on powering this block at a tangent to this got it makes sense yet so once I update it it'll push out and kinda reverse the whole process now it's off so that means that just like that one it won't react until I give it another update I hope that makes sense this little baby is my little holy grail I love this thing I learned how to make it from kid mischief and yeah I, I love this thing so much it works really nice as a secret switch and this is your output down here I'm not going to show you how to make it but as you can see it, it's really 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 useful you could take it put it in the ground like this let's see and have a nice little switch I've made a few different really cool mechanisms with this but that's all the mechanisms that I'm gonna go over for today I hope you got some information from this and I'm just gonna go hang out with this pig over here I'll see you guys later in the next doing it redstone with Davex that'll do pig that'll do